Hello and welcome to this taste challenge. We have Old Granddad introduced in 1882. This is a modern version, it used to be higher uh, alcohol. This is the 80 proof standard Old Granddad. I have a bottle in the kitchen of the Old Granddad bottled in bond. And I need to, I think I need to write a written review of that. <laughs> like need to, right? Want to. Okay, so I have a little bit of this left. <clears throat> Beam Suntory brand. It's a high rye mesh bill. Okay, Frankfurt in Claremont, Kentucky versus Kentucky Tavern. Introduced in 1903. Okay, distilled in Kentucky. A Sazerac Company slash Buffalo Trace brand. Uh, the old granddad is probably about 20%, 25% more expensive. Okay, you probably got to pay 25% more for the old granddad, I would think. Beam Suntory. Um, Kentucky Tavern. I don't think they sell that in this town, but you can get it in the New Orleans, probably Baton Rouge. I've never seen it around here. We get a limited area in this town because it's only, you know, we're only looking at 40,000 people in this whole parish. I would have started earlier, but I wanted to check all the football scores. I had to write down the football scores, make predictions for next week, then contact the people in our prediction club and then tell them what the results were. <laughs> then check all the basketball scores, NBA and college. Ugh. And I had also, after I went to seven o'clock mass, which lasted pretty much a whole hour. I went to uh, some stores scouting out this, but I ended up buying it where I originally started. Um, when Dixie had it, but they wanted $25.99, I said, I don't think so. Matherne said it for $22.99. They had a little sale. It seemed like that's been an ongoing sale. Oh, oh well. Uh, now they're saying sequence VO. Gold is the signature blend. Aged eight years. It's got a little cloth ribbon. And they said the master blender is Arthur Peterson. Okay. He has earned this right after 35 years of patient study experiment experience and experimentation. This special edition of VO has been created by author. Then it's got a signature on the back. And then I can't find any information on the internet. I, I went to the website they gave and it routed me to something called thebar.com, which is, I didn't know about. It's a bunch of Diageo brands. The whole Seagram 7 line, Seagram 7, Crown, then they give all the flavors. Then they give the the VO, but they don't talk about the VO Gold. I wonder if the VO Gold was discontinued. It's strange that it's not on the website. Kentucky, okay, Tyler says Kentucky Tavern was introduced in 1880. No, 1903. Old Granddad was 1882. Okay, Tyler. Tyler, you're the guy that sent me the beer, all the beer, the beer, the beer. I did record, by the way, Tyler, that uh, the, um, the Scotch, Scottish Ale, from Central Waters. I just have to post it eventually. It was very nice. Okay, on with the show. So anyway, the VO Gold, well, maybe we'll look at that in January. <laughs> Kentucky Tavern. This is gonna be a tough challenge because um, I think they're similar. Similar quality, not exactly similar price. Okay. Put a little ounce and a half there. Ounce and three quarters. <clears throat> There's a whole old granddad line. Now you got the old granddad, the old granddad bond, bonded. There's an old granddad 114 proof that Matherne says. I have never tried it and I would not want to try it because I tried that Elijah Craig barrel proof and that was too ghastly, strong, fusel woody chart and just too intense it was they were saying it's not cut it's not cut 
okay, that's why it tastes disgusting to me because it's not cut. It's too heavy, strong, blah. But I know other people love it. Well-made product, obviously. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Too strong for me. I didn't like it, okay. <laughs> Same appearance, more or less, that gold amber. Alberto says, what's up? Good morning, Ron. I'm drinking a Bud Light now and watching you. Thank you, man. Uh, I haven't drank any beer today. I did drink some um, of that Carlo Rossi Merlot about 6 o'clock in the morning. Oh, no, I'll take that back. Because after 6, I drank nothing but water. I was fasting before mass. I, it was about 5.30. Uh, maybe I drank four ounces of it. Five ounces. It wasn't a lot. That's 12% alcohol. You don't want to drink too much. But it was nice. Got to have your fruit juice. It's going to take me a month. I'm telling you, it's going to take me a month to drink that <laughs> Carlo Rossi four liter. That's a gallon. A gallon of red wine for $12.87. How you like that? And somebody told me, oh, that's what hobo kids drink when they sit by the railroad track. Uh, that might be true. I don't know. I haven't done an intense study of what hobo kids drink, where they hang out, or anything. I just know that Carlo Rossi has a really good website. They have all kind of drink recipes, food pairings. And it's very popular, so I don't know if you're saying it's a hobo drink. I don't know. Tyler says, you helped me figure out the date code, so thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Wikipedia says Kentucky Tavern was introduced in 1880. I know that. They may say that, but on the website and on the bottle here, it says first produced in the early 1900s. The, the company's telling us this, the early 1900s. I did a trademark research and I found out that the trademark was secured for Kentucky Tavern in the year 1903. So I don't know what they're talking about, the 1800s. I know that the company, Glenmore, See, I think that's where Wikipedia, whoever wrote the article, got confused because Glenmore was established in the 1800s, okay? It went bankrupt and repurchased again. Maybe Wikipedia is wrong. Yeah, maybe so. They could be wrong on that. I know the old printed encyclopedias would be wrong sometimes. Max Hardcore, Triple X says beer. Yep, beer. Well, I'm going to drink some beer later, okay? But right now I'm doing bourbon whiskey, okay? Then I might pour a little bit more of that old granddad and do uh, a written review. We, I mean, the three servings will fill this one little glass. Look at my four ounces. We're not talking about a whole lot of consumption, all right? In case people are wondering. Okay, which is which? I don't know. I think it's going to be a tough, tough, tough call here. I still want to go walk in a half a mile and then probably after the Saints game, because I'm going to watch the unpatriotic football league, go walk another half mile. I've already walked a half mile. I've got to eat the rest of the field peas and some salad with some sausage. You know what I eat? I had two broiled eggs this morning with some spiced ham and cheese. Of course, three cups of coffee. Uh, they're both very nice and they're caramel, sweet. Oh, yeah, but that is a good website, that In the Bar website. And they give you a real detailed, like, discussion of whiskey and gin and and rum. And they talk about all their brands, Diageo I'm talking about. Talking about the difference between single malt and blended whiskey and all of this stuff. And uh, it was that's another reason I'm late <laughs> starting because I was reading all that. But I did find it strange that they didn't talk about the VO gold, which was peculiar to me. Okay. Oh, um. I think the one on my left is old granddad because it's got too much of that peppery rye note. You know that rye bread and rye spice has the pepper? Let me put my glass on. I, I, I can see up close without the glasses, but if things are a little far away. 1977 future says long time subscriber ronald yes i know that i appreciate your support and i appreciate you watching hard for me to get too enthusiastic 
enthusiastic about this video as I can't get either of these over in Taiwan. Well, that's an irritation. Although I did just find Bolit and Buffalo Trace in a store lately. Okay. Well, oh, uh, Kentucky Tavern, that's a Buffalo Trace brand. If you look on the Buffalo Trace website, it's listed. So, And it's also under Great Bourbon. Yeah, yeah, the Great Bourbon website. Sorry. I don't think it's made at Buffalo Trace. It's confusing because Sazerac has all these little divisions. Kind of like Diageo. They actually show a map of the world with all their distilleries. Whiskey distilleries are interesting. Tyler says, my art teacher in college did lots of still drawings of Carlo Rossi with flowers in the jug and fruit on the side. We were all off. We were all far from hobos. Yeah, but y'all weren't sitting by the track drinking it. <laughs> you were uh, drawing still life, right? Of course, my grandmother and mother drank it too, and they didn't sit by a railroad track, and they weren't hobos. They just drank it. You think everybody that goes in Walmart is, I'm just making a comment. I'm just repeating a comment somebody made. And I mean, if you if you saw all the comments people make. <laughs> like somebody said something like, only, only, I like that people make these definitive comments. Only old people drink Budweiser. Only old people drink Budweiser. Okay, you just can't even entertain those kind of comments. I usually just kind of redirect it and say, thanks for watching my channel, I appreciate it, you know, because a lot of times they're looking for conflict. So I just, usually they'll go on and bother somebody else. Um, if you don't take the bait, you know. Okay, so I think this is the uh, old grand devil. Let's taste it. I want to start eating something at the top of the hour, I do believe. Ignoring the actual liquor, I am with you in spirit. I have in my hand a Bowmore 12 year, which is a cracking medium to low end scotch. Whoa. I have a Buchanan 12 year aged in my cabinet that I've never opened. And I've under, I understand that Buchanan is, or Buchanan, however it's spelled, Buchan, uh, pronounced Buchanan or Buchanan, depends who you talk to on that. But uh, I understand that um, that's a pretty well-renowned uh, Scotch whiskey. <laughs> Got a jacket on. It's a little chilly out there. I haven't run the heater yet this year, and I won't run it until I need to. As it stands now, I don't need to. <sighs> See, I don't know. This is going to be tough because they're both, they're both rye. You know, they're both kind of high rye. Sazerac has a tendency to do a lot of high rye stuff with their whiskeys. That's kind of like, from what I can tell, their benchmark. You know what I mean? <laughs> One of their brands benchmark. A lot of y'all know about Sazerac rye, right? There's different age levels of that. That's sort of a well-known whiskey, Sazerac rye. That's the first video review for a whiskey I ever did. Thank you, Sonia, if you're watching. She gave me the whole bottle. Never opened. She didn't want it. She said, you can have it. Somebody probably gave it to her, and she's just not into that rye stuff, so she wasn't going to waste it. I don't know. I'm getting a little nervous because this one's pretty awry, too, and it's got that honeycomb. You know, they both have the dried flowers and the dried, you know, the candied fruitcake fruit. I need to buy some fruitcake and some, uh, you know, the um, caramel, the flavors commonly associated with whiskey. they got the charred oak. Uh, well, uh, let me say this to you. If I can't tell them apart and I don't get them right, and there's a good chance of that, right? I will say this, they're both comparable, they're both enjoyable, and for $10.99 for a one liter bottle, you heard what I said, $10.99 plus tax for a one liter bottle of Kentucky Tavern. Why not get to Kentucky Tavern? I'm not gonna pay, you might pay $17.99 for the old granddad in the same, 
in, in a liter bottle, yeah, you might end up paying twenty ninety nine honestly for a liter. So I mean, <laughs> I'm going with the tavern every time. I'm going in the tavern. I'm not going to see Papa. You know, I'm not going to see old granddad. I'm not going to go see Grand Pierre. Grand Pierre. Mon Grand Pierre. I guess I was wrong, and I think this is the old granddad. But boy, it's close, and I mean close. I am so impressed with this Kentucky Tavern. I can't get over it. I mean, I was raving about old granddad from the instant I started reviewing it. And then that old granddad bonded is the best whiskey I've bought so far. Hadn't bought that many, but it's the best so far. I didn't buy the Sazerac Rye. That was given to me. That's a dynamite product too, but the old granddad bond, that's a winner all the way. Woo, I got it. I just, the more I drink on it and think on it, you know, I thought about it and it just seemed that it had too much um, rye component. It had to be that old granddad. Boy, I'll tell you what, if you like a spicy whiskey, and I love rye bread and a Reuben sandwich and go to a Deutsch's house and get that rye, that German rye bread. Oh, man. Good morning, Ron, says John and Neely. That old granddad is good stuff. You got that right. It's a good bit more money, though. Yeah, I know. I still haven't pit, had the Kentucky Tavern. I hopefully will pick up a bottle soon. Yeah, and if you call Sazerac, they'll tell you where to get it. Believe me, they'll tell you. I mean, they're good about that. Best company I ever dealt with this side of Paps. That's a great company too, Paps Brewing Company. They'll instantly contact you and say, you can get it here, 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 and here. Kentucky Tavern too. Now Beam, Beam Suntory was slow to respond, but after two weeks, they did get back to me and they told me all about the Jim Beam choice. So I did appreciate that. Okay, so, all right. It's a tie, no winner. There's no way there's a winner. I mean, this is just like beautiful versus beautiful. You know what I mean? But the old granddad was a little spicier. I didn't, you didn't hear me say better in any way, did you? I didn't say it was better, better. I said it was a little spicier. Now, so we have, in my opinion now, and you can take my opinion, down to the river and dump it if you want, because I, I don't claim to know anything about whiskey. And a lot of people would say, he sure doesn't. I drink, I can drink it though, right? Like my friend Paul says, why do people have to be an expert to give a taste challenge? You taste it and you, or he said to do a review. That's what he said. Why do I have to be an expert? They just taste it, tell what they think. The next person can do their own taste. You know, this, he said, this business about somebody, they're a big expert, you know. Everybody that goes to the grocery store is not an expert. They buy stuff. They eat it. They drink it. Tour Nation Game and TNG says, checking in. I'm glad you checked in. So this is a beautiful product. Kentucky Tavern is a beautiful product. Heading to bed, Ronald. Here, guys, it is 1 a.m. I hope you get round to Woodford Reserve. That is my bourbon of choice. If I can get it, I will look for both of these in Taipei. Uh, well, good night or good morning, Monday morning. And uh, take care. A 1977 future um, in the Republic of China, Taiwan Island in the Republic of China. Take care. Uh, I hope you find it. Uh, so anyway, next up next up uh, how about the venerable jim beam been on the market since 1938 now you might say oh no no it's 1780 some uh, actually it's 1938 but anyway uh so um kentucky tavern hey versus jim beam i think kentucky tavern is gonna beat it you know what it's going to beat the beam out of the beam. <laughs> it's going to crack the center beam. I, I'm just saying that. I don't know that. I just think it's going to beat Jim Beam. I think it's a better product. 
that might sound like heresy to some people. Oh, that rise. So, oh, but wait a minute. Jim Beam? No. Maybe I should put it up against. Um, what's that stuff called? <laughs> From 1955, um, they got the green label and the black label. Mental block. Okay, uh, so um, they got all these dang, these dang names. You know, you can't keep up with all these down home Kentucky names, right? Evan Williams. <laughs> How could I forget Evan Williams? Yeah, I think I'll go against the Evan Williams which is a little bit higher proof. Then I'll get into the beam and the beam's choice, which by the way, my friend David, you see him with the big beard. You know, I was talking to him yesterday. He uh, does a lot of those reviews with me. He just adored the Jim Beam choice, which is age five years in, in charcoal filtered. Boy, he, he, I said, you want to try some more? He said, man, I blew through that bottle. That bottle's been gone. <laughs> Toadmaster. Hey, Matt, he says, yep, you have to call it like you see it. You sure? You're right. I am going to call it like I see it, no matter how it comes down. So, okay, so let's say this. God willing, we'll do uh, Kentucky Tavern versus uh, Evan Williams. And then down the road, we'll do Jim Beam, the white label. Everybody knows that. Then the Jim Beam choice, which you'll never see it in a store unless they got some left over because it's been discontinued. So if you see it, you like they told me it, like Jim Bean Company told me, if you see it, you better buy it because it is not coming back. Uh, and then we'll go up against the old Jack Daniels black label, of course. Jack Daniels, who don't, who hasn't seen that in, you know, every day of their life. And then the Jack Daniels green label, which is a little bit of a problem for most people to find. Although if you go to Texas, it is the Jack Daniels of Texas. I was talking to Paul. He said, well, that's really what, if you go to Texas, that's really what people buy when they say, I'm going to get Jack Daniels. They buy the green label. The black label is there, but the green label is more prominent. I can testify. I can attest to that because uh, I was shopping in Texas and that green label was everywhere, like out front, multiple facings of a multiplicity of um, sizes. And then the black label was over there, kind of like a lonely stepchild, which would be abs absolutely unheard of in every other state, more or less, right? Come to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, that's the, that's the one, right? The black label. Tyler says, thanks for being a creator and active in reviews. Oh, you're welcome. I sure enjoy talking about brands and their history. Yeah, that's my main um, focus with these videos. Other people have a different focus, and that, that's fine. There's no criticism there. But I think some people that dislike the channel or whatever, they, they don't understand the channel. Like they say, you're not part of the movement, right? You know, you don't. You're not fighting for the little guy or you're not part of the great struggle. I know I'm not, believe me. This is just simply looking at brands and tasting them. So if you if you want to do video reviews, beer, wine, liquor, that's part of some great social struggle, that would be other web, other uh, YouTube channels. Uh, this one ain't it. Oh, one last point says future. Uh, before I head off, uh, they have Jim Beam Devil's Cut. Ah, yes, we get that. For less than an hour's wage at my local shop, and I'm going to buy tomorrow. How do you rate that? I really can't say I've never had it. Now, if Mila Kunis, the Jewish-Russian immigrant, wants to go out to dinner and then do a tasting over here at this house, I'll try it. So I haven't heard from them, but if the bean company calls me and they want to set up a dinner and a tasting with 
the, the girl, Mila Kunis, you know, the lady that does the commercials. I'll do that. And then we'll do some videos and see how that works out. Uh, that would be an interesting uh, exploration of uh, alcoholic beverage um, social interaction, let's call that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't assume that's going to happen, although I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm ruling it out. I could get elected vice president of the world as well, but I don't, they haven't called me, you know. But anyway, so anyway, um, I'll tell you one last thing. This is a true story now, talking about Zimbabwe. You say, we were talking about Zimbabwe? Yeah, well, that's in the news, right? I, I was offered a position in 1990 to be a headmaster at a school in Zimbabwe. I turned it down. But um, that would have been an interesting life experience, right? Go and live in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe and run a school. You know, I didn't really like the direction Zimbabwe was going in in 1990. And uh, I think I made the wise decision not to go. <laughs> but I was offered. I was actually literally offered that position. Okay, anyway. Uh, And the guy that offered it to me was a man named Samuel Mambina. Mambima. Bam, Mambina. <laughs> Samuel Mambina. Okay. In case you want to check me. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. It was very exciting to me. You might have rolled your eyes and laughed, but I thought it was great. I love these taste challenges. I'm doing it mainly for my own entertainment. I just put it on video because I figure other people might enjoy it. And apparently people do. So stay tuned. Might be about two days from now. We've got another bourbon whiskey taste challenge.